Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert uh, with Maths and Stats uh, and in this short video uh, I'm going to uh, I suppose walk through, uh, try to demystify uh, the formulas associated with the mean, the variance and standard deviation. In particular the formulas for calculating the mean variance and standard deviation are associated with discrete probability distribution. Uh, let's just maybe just recap, recap that when we have a, let's say, a discrete frequency distribution, okay, or discrete frequency distribution, let's say it looks something like, let's say for argument's sake that it's a discrete frequency distribution in relation to rolling a, a dice, a die, and let's say the distribution looks something like this. So what we have is we have the outcomes, the X's listed here. Six-sided die has six possible outcomes. Each outcome is labeled. Uh, one face is labeled with number one, followed by a two, a three, four, five, and six. Okay. And let's say for argument's sake that we roll this dice a number of times and we record the frequency of occurrence of each of the face values. Let's say our frequency is down here. And what we have is, let's say, the one occurs, let's say, 10 times, followed by 20, 30, let's say, 40, 30, and 20 gives us a total. So what we have here is, if you look at this, we have uh, we have 10, we have 30, we have 60, we have 100, we have 150. So basically what this frequency distribution represents is I rolled a die 150 times. And I recorded the phase values that came up on the die. And the number one came up 10 times, and number four came up 40 times, and so on and so forth. Now, with a discrete frequency distribution, it's quite straightforward to calculate the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. And we actually have formulas for that. And if you, if you look back uh, to one of the earlier videos in this particular playlist, uh, you'll see an explanation in relation to those formulas. But the formulas look something like this. Let's assume, I'm just going to assume, assume that this data let's say, is whether it's sample or population data, let's just assume it's population data, okay? So let's assume the data is our population. These are all the values uh, that we got from a particular experiment, and maybe we'll end up sampling from that particular, that particular uh, collection of values. But let's just make things simple. Let's just assume that we have a popul uh, population data. And to calculate the mean, the mean is straightforward enough. We calculate the mean symbolized by mu, for frequency distribution, it's simply equal to the sum of the frequencies times the observations divided by the sum of the frequencies, okay? In relation to the variance, the variance, the population variance, sigma squared, is the sum of the squared distances between the observations and the population mean, okay? Oh, and don't forget, this is a frequency distribution, so each one of these distances occurs f times, uh, divided by the sum of the frequencies uh, divided by the sum, uh, this is actually the population variance, so it's actually just divided by the sum of the frequencies. And the standard deviation, the standard deviation uh, formula is given by sigma, which is the square root of the variance. So it's the sum of the frequencies times the x's minus the mu squared divided by the sum of the frequencies, and it's the square root of that. So we've no problem in calculating these particular formulas. And you can see in a previous video that we, we calculate these particular formulas, the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation of these discrete uh, distributions. But what about if we have a probability distribution? Okay? And don't forget, from a probability, from an empirical probability perspective, the probability of an event is simply equal to the number of favorable outcomes, favorable outcomes, okay? uh, divided by the number of possible outcomes, okay? Possible outcomes. So in relation to this particular distribution, we can convert it to a probability distribution by adding in an extra column P of X that represents the probability of each individual event, okay? Uh, so what's the probability that if I roll a die 150 times that I get a one? Well, the answer is uh, the number of favorable outcomes is 10 over 150. So we have the number of favorable outcomes, the probability of rolling a die and getting a one is 10 over 150, uh, which is equal to one over 15. And on the calculator, one divided by 15 gives us a value of, that gives us a value of 0 0.06, let's say. So let's just round it to 0 0.07, okay? The probability of getting a two would be 20 chances out of 150. So it's 20 divided by 150, which would give us a value of 0 0.13. The probability of getting a three is 30 chances, okay? Should be the sum of the previous ones, so that'd be 0 
0.20. The probability of getting getting a four should be about 0 0.26. Uh, and the probability of getting, sorry, the probability of getting a five, there's 30 of them, so that should be 0 0.20. And the probability of getting a six, well, there's 20 of them, so that should be 0 0.13. I and mean, when we add up all the probabilities, we should get one. Let's keep in mind that we do have some rounding up and rounding down here. Uh, but when I add up these probabilities, let's say we have 0 0.07 plus 0 0.13 plus 0 0.20 plus 0 0.26 plus 0 0.20 plus 0 0.13, what we end up with is, well, you can see we actually end up with 0 0.99. Don't forget, we rounded a little bit in here. We rounded down more than we rounded up. Uh, so it's close enough. It's approximately, that's approximately equal, equal to one. It's actually equal to 0 0.99, and that's just because of rounding. But the point I'm trying to make here is this, is that a discrete probability distribution yeah, is very similar to a discrete frequency distribution. The only difference is, is that we have probabilities listed instead of the actual frequencies. So in the case, in the case of where we're presented with a probability distribution, a discrete probability distribution, probability distribution, okay? distribution okay so for example this distribution here so all we're presented with now is the outcomes